What's up everybody, Amiga Bill here. This is the GoX on pills drive, and I'm gonna show you why this GoX is so cool. But your meditation. First, the GoX lets me load floppy disk images called ADF files from an SD card instead of using actual floppies. Now, if you're familiar with retro computing, you've probably heard of a Go Tech drive like this one right here. They've been around for a while and are floppy drive replacements, originally used in things like keyboards and sewing machines because they actually load things from floppy disk as well. Now, the problem with these drives is that the form factor is not specifically designed to fit inside of an Amiga. Like, I've literally seen people completely butcher their Amiga cases trying to get these things to fit in, and it can get pretty ugly, let me tell you. Now people have come up with much better solutions for their original Gotex, like this 3D printed tray that you can get from awesome stores like Retro Ready One. But I just love the elegance of the GoX. This GoX drive has got lots of neat features that make it super easy to install and use. Let's take a look. The first thing I love about it is that it's specifically designed for an Amiga 500, 600, or 1200 like I've got here. It's made by Centurion Tech, and when you order on their website, you can specify which Amiga model you'll be installing it in, and it comes pre-configured with the appropriate mounting hardware, which you can see right here. The hardware also comes in white or black. Of course, I got black. <laughs> it also comes pre-configured with the open source flash floppy firmware for your Amiga, so you're ready to go with it right out of the box. This is the slightly more expensive on pills edition of the GoX, which means that it comes in black, which is perfect for my CD32 color Amiga 1200. And it also has the ability to display information on your monitor and control the GoX with your keyboard. But this feature requires a bit of soldering to your motherboard. So I'm gonna skip it for now and I'm gonna stick with just using the OLED and the jog dial. The on pills version I have is 41 euro and the base version is 31 euro. For an additional nine and a half euros, I purchased this 1.3 inch OLED display. It mounts right outside your Amiga, right there. And it makes it really easy for you to see which ADF you have selected, as well as the track that's being accessed. I find this like really convenient and I highly recommend this OLED. Some Gotex have a display like on the side and you have to look around the side of the Amiga to see it. But the, the fact that you can just have the display right on top of your Amiga makes it super convenient and accessible. And it also comes with uh, the mounting hardware, data cable, two power cables, and a connector for the OLED wires, which you attach after threading the wires through the vents on your Amiga. On the drive itself, we have an SD card slot right here, and it's easily accessible through the empty space in the case where your floppy disk would normally go. There's also a USB version available if you want to use a USB stick instead of an SD card. This jog wheel right here lets you scroll through the ADF files on the SD card, and it's also easily accessible through the floppy disk slot right there, and it's very low profile. This is a small speaker that makes sounds when the drive is accessing the disk. Now, when I first heard about a speaker on the drive emulator trying to fake the sounds of a floppy drive, I hated the idea. Uh, but this is actually more of a buzzer than a speaker. And it's not trying to make like a fake sound, it just buzzes a little bit. And I find this really useful because sometimes you don't know if your Amiga is locked up or it's actually still loading the disk. Um, but when you hear it buzzing away, you know that's still loading and it's not locked up. And the sound is very, very unobtrusive. This is where you connect the floppy data cable and the power cable. And these four pins connect the external OLED display. There's also a small LED light that flashes when the drive is being accessed. All right, let's install this baby. If you're using a traditional Amiga 1200 case like this one, it's super easy to drop in the GoX and mount it. Like everything lines up perfectly. But I'm using this new Amiga 1200 case from a1200.net. The new cases are slightly different than the original ones because they have enhancements like those really cool brass inserts for the screws. Now, as a result of these enhancements, the screws are in a slightly different place than they are on the original Amiga 1200 case. This means that the GoX doesn't line up quite as well. But with a little work, I was able to get it to fit without a problem or making any kind of modifications to either the case or the GoX itself. After I mounted the drive, I ran the cables for the OLED through the vents on the top of the case, then I put on the plastic connector and attached it to the drive. Okay, let's put this thing to use. There are a few different modes with the GoX and the Flash Floppy firmware. I'm gonna use what is called native mode. I keep all my ADF disk images on my PC and I only copy over what I currently want to run onto the SD card. 
You can also copy all your ADF files onto the SD card and access them through an image selector program in HXC compatibility mode. But I prefer to copy over a few images at a time. It feels more like I'm using a real floppy that way. In this case, I'm going to copy over disk 1 and disk 2 of the awesome new Amiga game, Wiz, Quest for the Magic Lantern. Copying over Wiz disk 1 and disk 2 from the hard drive to my SD card. Pop in the SD card. Turn on the Amiga. Scroll to Wiz disk 1. And we're off to the races. Insert disk 2. Mutation software, oh yeah. Woo! We got some whiz, baby! There you have it. I absolutely love this GoX drive, and I highly recommend it. I love that it comes complete with the mounting hardware and flash floppy firmware for the Amiga, like right out of the box. It makes the installation and setup an absolute breeze. I also love the form factor, the jog wheel, the speaker, and the external OLED display. Being able to run ADF files on a real Amiga is very convenient these days because many of the games are being distributed as downloadable ADF files. Even physical editions of games, like this copy of Wiz by Mutation Software, comes with ADF files on a USB stick, this one right here. So it's super handy having this awesome GoX drive. If you like this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Guru Meditation because we've got a ton of new videos planned for 2021. I'm going to continue with this Dream Amiga 1200 series. I got a new power supply for this I'm going to show you. I got a new PC MCI adapter for it. Uh, it's going to be awesome as well as a lot of new other stuff with Anthony as well. Thank you so much for watching and Amiga forever.